No, it was the first time. Okay, so my plan is I'm going to take my podcast and uh, with StreamYard, you could um, live stream at the Twitch. And I'm going to try to get my Twitch following built up. That way people can watch the podcast live. And okay. then if they if they have comments and stuff, they can ask questions as I'm doing it. Yeah, that's actually a good idea, actually. Yeah, it's uh, one of my – the partner that I have come up with it. So mm. the thing I'm having trouble with, though, like right now, I'm not recording the video. No. And I've got to go into Twitch, and there's a way you can set up your Twitch channel to automatically download live broadcast like this. Uh, but I've got the audio on my digital recorder, so – you know, for the podcast, that's great. I'm going to have that covered. Um, just now, I got to figure out how to get the video. <laughs> and I think with StreamYard, I can do a lot more stuff. I can add banners, backgrounds. There's a lot of stuff I can do. I just got to find time, to mess with it. All right. Uh, and now that I've got this great and powerful mustache, I'll be able to yeah. do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, my beard grew all huge and big. And I was trimming it. And before I had it way down to here and it was big and bushy, like I belonged in the Civil War. Uh, but the wife didn't care much for that. So <laughs> she still hates this, uh, <clears throat> but she's going to have to get used to it because I'm going to keep it for a while. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, I was in the hospital the last week, uh, not this week, but the week before. Oh, what happened? Um, I got pancreatitis. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I don't even know how, but uh, most likely it was an infection. But basically, right now I'm on insulin, so based, I'm pretty much diabetic right now. No kidding. Yeah. Dang. Okay. Well, that uh, talk about life hitting you real quick. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, the, the the only plus side was that like all the nurses that were like taking care of me were pretty hot and all that stuff. So. You know, at least uh, it gave me something to flirt to. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. So right. sounds, sounds like you've been a pretty busy little beaver then since last time we talked. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get uh, my – the whole thing with the podcast and, like, the finances stuff going. Like, I got to do my taxes, and I'm working with a CPA, so I got that going. Plus, uh, I'm looking into trying to get a truck so I can get a kayak and then – also start the the apparel business that I'm trying to do. Like it's all gonna be e-commerce, but yeah. What kind of kayak are you gonna get? I don't know, man. Right now I'm leaning towards a crescent. Okay, we gotta talk about this. Uh I am a wilderness systems junkie. I think they're the best. Uh and I don't know, I don't know what your budget is, but they've got a new kayak out called a recon. Uh it's a paddle drive hoss tank of a kayak it's gonna be great i want one real bad um the kayak i have right now is a wilderness systems tarpon 120 mm. and it's it's a fishing kayak but it's also a recreational kayak so it's fast on the water it's easy to handle um but you can still upgrade it with all the fishing amenities okay and the guy i do the podcast with he has a bona fide and he swears by them yeah, I mean, uh, so I'm working with uh, my local tackle shop because they sell the, they sell the kayaks and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're not they're not too happy with Bonafide right now and Vibe, Spe specifically Vibe, uh, because Vibe was basically like so they were they were saying like oh you know this shipment's gonna come at this time and they would take orders for for that you know taking into account that the shipment was gonna arrive at when they said they were, and they just kept pushing it back pushing it back with no very little information as to why obviously it was during COVID times, but still like they didn't really say anything. So yeah. So okay. they're, 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 the little, the relations between them to that shop and vibe were like, nah. And then I don't know about, I forgot what they said about Bonafide, but yeah, I was looking at Crescent. I mean, I think, I think the Bonafide one is the one I was looking for the paddle, paddle drive one, mm -hmm. uh, the pedal drive, not paddle. pedal. Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. But I want one of each. Ideally, and I have high vaulted ceilings here in my apartment, so I can store them here. So that's why. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, have you always wanted a kayak or is this something kind of like new? You're like, okay, I'm done bank fishing. Let's, let's hit the water. Something new. It's the first time. There's a lot of information out there. You should be able to find some really good resources to, to really get into it. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to it, man. It's just something, something new. Uh, it's easier to catch fish. Well, not easier, but you know, you can, you know, cover more water. It changes everything. I'm right there with you. I, when I moved out here, I just started bank fishing because I really didn't want to drag my kayak out. I didn't have my truck running so, to get it out. And after you've kayak fished for a little while, hitting the banks is, is no fun. You don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> so yeah. that's good. I'm glad your, uh, your passion for fishing is just blossoming. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And uh, but the thing is like this whole year, I haven't really fished at all. I, was, like, I have actually uh, ever since 2021 started. So, well, that's not bad. It's only 20 days. Only, dude? Like, <laughs> I think, what was it? From, like, from like June up until, like, December, I was fishing almost every day. Every day? Mm hmm Man, must be nice. I mean, well, I skipped going to the gym oftentimes, so it's, you know... <laughs> Yeah, not so not so nice. And like right now, ever since I got the pink and tight, it's like I'm I'm going to the gym a lot more. So yeah, I'm taking a little bit more serious. So yeah. I've been I've been lucky. I've been able to go out once a weekend, uh, mm. but my fishing's been different. Uh, you know, hitting the ice, and that's been a brand new experience for me. I've you know I've been lucky to catch one or two fish every time I go out, but it's different. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I've heard. I mean, I kind of want to try it one of these days, but the cold. I need to adjust to that. <laughs> uh, let's see. The first time we went out, we got there at uh, daylight, like seven o'clock and it was negative seven. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so it, it's a big change for sure. You want to know the worst I've ever experienced, like in terms of temperature? Oh, let me guess. 40. 21. Oh, okay. All right. That's pretty right. cool. Yeah, I used to be the biggest wuss. Me and my buddy had a 55-degree rule. If it was below 55 degrees, we weren't fishing. Mm -hmm. And now, now here I am. I'm, I'm bugging my neighbor like, hey, we going out this weekend? It's going to be butt-ass cold. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. No, and I was just like, I think, two days, and it was when I was visiting Texas. I wasn't even, like, living here yet. And uh, uh, it was just, what was it? I think it was in spring where I went. Yeah, it was, like, around springtime. And it was just that one cold front that just hit. Texas when I was there and it was only the one day that was 21 the other the other the, other, the rest of the week it was like 50 60 and you know and up so I was like okay freaking stupid but yeah so have you started recording oh yeah I've, I've been recording the whole time oh okay I, re I record everything to me uh you know the little beginning tidbits they're pretty fun so uh, if nothing else I can use them for promotional stuff so I, I record the whole thing yeah. Uh, so if let's go ahead and get started proper and, Wait, and before you do that, let me use the rest real quick. Go ahead. <laughs> That's kind of why I asked. <laughs> All right, give me a second. Give me a second. Uh, Elunian, this, uh, Coors banquet is pretty good. I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, what, what, is there anything in particular you're asking what's good? Hey, that sounds good. I haven't had a whiskey and Coke probably in six or seven years. We went on a camping trip in Michigan and we were sitting around the fire. I'm not a big drinker anyway. And uh, I mixed up a couple of Jack and Cokes, and <laughs> I think I drank a little too much. That's one of the few times I have. In case you're curious about what we're going to be talking about, Alunian, uh, I do an outdoor recreation podcast, and my guest uh, has his own podcast 
where he talks about outdoor recreation and mental health. So we're going to be covering uh, fishing, mental health, and just getting outdoors. And then here real soon, starting every Friday, and we'll be uh, time flies every Friday. So, all right, <laughs> now let's do this proper. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's get you introduced. Uh, Al, you have mm -hmm. your own podcast, uh, Mindful mm -hmm. Endeavors. So let's go back a little bit. Uh, when did you first start getting involved in outdoor activities, outdoor recreation? Uh, so I've dabbed here and there in the different things throughout my life, mostly around the time that I was like 16, it started off kind of like with just hiking kind of and, and a little bit of camping. And then, uh, just throughout the time, it was just kind of like whatever came up, came up, like sometimes it'd be hiking trips. Uh, that then, then I got into like some, you know, firearms, you know, recreational activities, sports shooting mostly. And, uh, the last thing that I'm kind of slowly getting into is the, the hunting experience, but basically started since around 16. Uh, didn't really grew up with that kind of like upbringing, which, you know, it is what it is, but kind of had to self teach myself. And then I had a buddy of mine that I met out in California that kind of introduced me to a lot of those things. So uh, that's kind of how I got into it. And uh, yeah. And uh, more specifically now it was because of COVID, um, that kind of definitely sparked the interest even more just because I had a fishing rod that I bought of over a year ago and then never even used. And I'm just like, okay, now's a good time to try because everything was closed. The parks are still open, sort of. I mean, technically they were closed. You weren't supposed to be in there, but, you know, a bunch of people <laughs> still went sure. there anyway. So, and that's how it started. That's how I got my Instagram going and everything. And uh, you moved from California to Texas, right? Correct. And it yeah. makes it makes perfect sense that you get into fishing because you know you think of Texas and me, I automatically think of huge bass. I mean, is that what you started like you knew right away? Like, hey, there's big fish in here. I'm just going to start fishing. <clears throat> so I've uh, the first time I fished was on the uh, out in California, out in, off of Newport uh, Beach, off of Charter. And uh, I mean, back then it was like, okay, I want to, I want to get into more fishing. So I, I definitely fished off the jetty, off the, the jetties and like the, you know, the pier here and there. Um, but when I went to Texas, like when I came here to Texas, it was just kind of one of those things where I was like, I just want to catch something. So it wasn't really about the bass at the time, yeah. even though just by sheer stupid luck, I caught a four pound, 4.2 pounder, like the, what, the fourth day I started fishing. Um, and it was, again, I say by, by mistake because of, um, I didn't know this was kind of a technique that some people use, but basically the jerk baits, you're supposed to kind of just like jerk them down. Mm -hmm. Like, and you know, it's like jerk, 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 pause, jerk, 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 pause. I wasn't doing that. I was kind of slow rolling it kind of like a swim bait. Uh -huh. And for some reason that triggered a bass and it just, it tried gobbling it up. And then I, I pulled it out and just see this big old bass and was like what do i do like you know like <laughs> you know it's <laughs> i was like i don't know how to take it off and yeah i took a picture with like it's still being hooked on like its mouth and yeah and then had somebody else kind of take it off the hook and yeah that was my first bass basically and before that like i was catching a bunch of sunfish with a little small crankbait it was like a little like half an inch maybe crank crankbait uh-huh you know just catching a bunch of sun sunfish so yeah, and when I caught that, I was just like, "Ooh, dude, the adrenaline that I got from like fighting that fish!" I was fighting it with an eight with eight or six pound line with a light rod, light spinning rod. So, yeah, I was in for a little while. Like, I think the drag, the max drag power I had was, I think, probably like four pounds on my reel, maybe like oh, four shoot. pounds. <laughs> yeah, so all these things didn't make sense to me when I was <laughs> fishing that time. But I still managed to land it. <clears throat> I've been fishing for 30 years, and I don't think I've ever caught a four-pound bass. Good. Yeah. No, well, Texas is a good place to, for, for that as well, yeah. <laughs> so you you literally, I mean, didn't know a, a lot, like almost anything about bass fishing? You just 
started throwing lures? Yeah, well, I researched how to cast before I, you know, went out and cast like maybe like for a week. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really know anything about bass fishing. I mean, that's I kind of just went in there. I'm like, all right, trying to see, let's see what I can get. And uh, yeah, so that's how I started. But now I'm, a little, I'm, a, I'm definitely a lot more technical now. But uh-huh. you know, like, so there's still a lot to learn. But definitely more technical compared to how I first started. So where did you pick up just watching YouTube videos? Yeah, so uh, the main ch- two channels that I learned from, one of them was a channel, I think it's called One One Rod, One Reel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forgot what the dude's name there is, but that dude and then Scott Martin. Okay. Um, so those two guys, I learned a lot from both of them. And some other guy named uh, Debo, Debo's Fishing, or I'm not sure if that's his name, but uh, mm-hmm. his channel called Debo's Fishing. So those three, those three channels are the ones that kind of got me into it. And then now it's more of like uh, the tactical bass and people that I, that I kind of watch a lot. And like, that's how I learned how to, how to use the, what is it? The, the thing called the chatterbait. That's how oh, I learned yeah. how to use the chatterbait. Yeah. I've never used a chatterbait. I'm going to go and say it. Dude, those things are money. Like I, Oh, then like I, when I first started using chatterbaits before I started like watching the tactical bass and channel i spent i kid you not probably around 200 dollars just on chatterbaits that i lost just because i let them sink to the ground and try like dragging them off the ground for some odd reason <laughs> just get stuck on something and god all right cut the line and everything so it was horrible so you, so you moved to texas start bass fishing you start taking pictures building up your instagram uh when did the idea come around for the podcast because me and you started around the same time. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that, like, like I said, like when I had you on my podcast, it made sense for you to be on there because you, 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 and one of my buddies were the ones that kind of like got me into it. There was this other, this other girl that uh, I met through the fishing community that she kind of like gave me the final push uh, because I told, I already told her like, oh, I'm planning on starting a podcast and this and that, and she was like, well, what's stopping you? And I'm like, well, I'm just trying to figure this out. I'm like, okay, then do it. And she basically just called me out, like saying, just do it. And I'm just like, all right, fine. Uh, but basic, uh, I think the idea for the podcast, um, it started around probably July of last year. Uh, I didn't really materialize until I think September, I want to say. Um, but yeah, it, it was just more like, um, I mean, not to get too much into politics, but the fact that like the, uh, you know, mental health wasn't wasn't being talked about a lot, and uh, it has come up in the political discourse, but it the, the conversation goes nowhere. So um, that's kind of like what my motivation was behind the podcast is to actually bring some, bring more topics related to mental health because it's multifaceted, right? So yeah, I wanted to bring that to the forefront and just talk about it. I didn't necessarily it's, it wasn't necessarily about bringing solutions to the table, even though that is a huge plus. And if you know if we, you know, if I can provide through conversations with my guests some solutions for people, that's great. Uh, I just want to keep the conversation going because that's what's missing a lot. You know, definitely we need more conversations around mental health, and that's how that started. And I, I, I think it's starting to become a little bit more serious. I was reading an article today. There's a school district in uh, Las Vegas where the the teen suicide rate has went up so drastically that, that they are, they're going to start school no matter what, just because it's so dangerous to keep the kids home. I, I don't know. I don't know if, if your focus is on, you know, a child or teen mental health more or more so just overall mental health. Um, it, it, I'm, tr- I'm trying to target all aspects. Youth. Um, I had a teacher, a school teacher. Um, I think it was, it was probably the guest after your episode. Um, we talked. We talked about like well, how she sees, like how she can see the the mental health kind of deteriorate. Because even though here in Texas we're not necessarily like full lockdown, but the schools are still restricted. It's not like they're 100 percent like they can go out and like you know do whatever. Like they still have to wear masks and stuff. So, so she sees more or less how it's deteriorating a little bit. Like when she's like teaching kids in person, she just doesn't always do in person teaching, but. The times that she does it and you know even with just going through zoom calls and stuff she sees it so yeah i mean i'm not just specifically on one type of one aspect of mental health i'm trying to target everything like that's not being talked about now you know 
uh, like you said, it is getting more serious in the sense that the conversation is starting to come up a little bit more in terms of like kids, you know, and their psychological health. But I feel like it still needs more conversation because it's, it's, it's um, the thing, like when you're talking about like uh, the depression, like even like in teenagers, like you look at the depression in teenagers, it's gone up as um, along with the, the use of social media, basically. The more the social media has been used, the, the, cor- the correlation is there between that and like, you know, deterioration of mental health, especially amongst teens. And I think we talked about it in, in, my la- in, in our episode, uh, specifically women, young teenage girls, they're the ones that are affected the most from this. So yeah, so I'm trying to talk about everything. We talked about the homeless, homelessness and uh, you know, how like mental health affects that as well. Uh, different things, even relationships, like just kind of like being single, single guy. Uh, I'm trying to get uh, single parent, uh, single parents to also kind of like come on and talk about like the stresses of that, stresses of having a newborn, uh, different things like that. So it's it's a lot. It's a lot of things that I'm trying to cover, and I don't. Uh, I'm trying to spread them out so they don't seem too repetitive, like you know, one after another. But yeah, so that's kind of like my thing. And not only you're doing mental health, but you're trying to tie it back into outdoor recreation, which is kind of what made me interested in in being on your podcast and you being on mine, you know, since I talk about outdoor recreation stuff. Uh, Mm -hmm. Do you think that just being outdoors is a partial solution to to the mental health crisis? Uh, So one of the things that I kind of always emphasize is that it's not a one size fits all solution. Um, For somebody like me, it helped a lot, like tremendously. Like it definitely got me out of that depression, like dive that I was going that was just like I was just no nose diving into depression. That it definitely helped me. Uh, it, has, it has helped on a lot of the guests that I've had on. Uh, for some other guests, like they've never been outdoors, and you know, but they still kind of like use like the fresh air and just kind of like act, outdoor activities, like you know, playing sports and stuff as a way to decompress. So uh, one of the things that the reason why I tied in the outdoors more is because one, I love to fish, love to you know, go hiking and stuff like that. But most importantly, because if I tie it in, I want to kind of give it a little different aspect to the conversation and, you know, possibly provide a solution for sure. But but you also go to the gym and work out a lot. So, I mean, exercise has been proven to, to be a big deterrent to, to mental health disorders. Uh, have you talked to anybody on your podcast that's like a, say, a fitness coach or a exercise guru to have their opinion on it? Uh, so I, I'm planning on having on one, uh, one of my coaches cause I used to, yeah, I actually, actually used to train for like to go fight and stuff like that. So one of my strength and conditioning coaches, I do want to have him on because I do want to talk about that as, as well. Uh, I do plan on having a nutritionist or at least somebody that's, uh, that's into like a, you know, healthy, healthy eating advocate, uh, because, you know, you know, just exercise that helps a lot and, you know, builds confidence and everything. And, you know, confidence does can be an underlying co- uh, problem to mental health. And uh, same thing with food. Uh, food, uh, I've kind of experienced it at one point where it's like you, if you eat a, a lot of crappy food, like, like it's not even so much about like just being like all shredded, right? But it's just if you're eating a lot of crappy food, you feel really crappy sometimes. So there's a lot of aspects to that as well. And then that mood kind of carries over into other things. And if you, you know, it's, it's really, it's really uh, interesting. So yeah, I've talked about, exercise briefly on with one of my guests and we've talked about how um there's people that kind of like idolize these health fitness people and they kind of like the pitfalls of of that right one of them being like you're constantly idolizing somebody and you want the same results they're going to get which is you know when it comes to like physiology like you know genetics are not all the same we were not all the same even though we may look similar but we're not all the same so um I kind of want to talk about more of the approach of like, you know, okay, well, what do they do to get to their goal and just kind of uh, basically take that motivation, take that kind of like style and dedication and basically put it onto you yourself. So that way you go on your own, like your own uh, racetrack and you're kind of getting, uh, getting your, your end goals instead. And you, you know, you you may not look exactly like the person that, that, you know, you copy that from, but that's okay. As long as you feel good, as long as you look good, as long as you're better than yourself, you better than what you were before, you know, yesterday or something like that. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's all about just setting personal goals. Um, you know, I might not have an exercise goal, but I mean, as you know, I've been I've been tying a lot of flies here lately. Yeah. And every tie, I, every fly I tie, I'm like, okay, I did something wrong the first time. I can fix it this time, and it's going to be better. Right. So uh, you know, just realizing that you can make progress, it just takes time, and it takes a lot of waste. You know, you figure out things that are wrong. You know, I waste money by sitting by my fly tying kit. You know, my fly box is full of flies that might look like garbage to some people, but I can see the progression. You know, I can see they're getting better and better. Right. Well, I mean, I wait, I wait like I told you right before we started this proper, uh, I wasted $200 on Chatterbase, and so I finally figured out how to use it. And so, you know, <laughs> I kept on losing the like a $15 Chatterbait, a $10 Chatterbait, and it was just, oh, it was so gut-wrenching, but. You know, I didn't didn't quit, and then now I'm catching like, it went, uh, I, w- I was in a uh, one little tournament that we had. It's just on a Facebook group that we have out here in Texas, and uh, you know, I, it was my first tournament with these guys, and you know, which is friendly competition, and I ended up winning the large bass ca- largest bass category, and I caught that off a of chatterbait. So, uh, you know, it, the hard work, the definitely the monetary sacrifice <laughs> paid off. Uh, so, you know. I, yeah, now I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty well and catching like some pretty good, good, decent sized fish, especially um, uh, off, off this red, the fire craw chatter bait that, uh, you know, like right now they're sold out because uh, around wintertime, red, red colors are the best just because that's what the, what the crawfish kind of like more resemble mm-hmm. during wintertime. So, and then also I forgot which guy, some tournament guy caught, won, won his tournament with the, fire crawl chatter bait. So that's why they were, those, be, that, that color became popular, but I was using it in the summertime, almost spring, almost a uh, fall time. And I was just catching bass with it. So yeah, like, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, 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 so what, it kind of, what I'm trying to get at is that, yeah, we like a lot, a lot of times we, we get into something, but we're expecting instant gratification, which we're not going to get right off the bat. You got to work towards it. Yeah. Uh, let's transition from mental health for just a second. And uh, you, you got me thinking about bass fishing. Uh, obviously, it's January. It's colder. Fishing style is a little bit different. How are you fishing for bass right now? What, what's your setup look like? Uh, do I have something right here? So, yeah, actually, I do. One of these. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So make I, a bass- I yeah. would never, ever pick that up off the counter. Ever. Yeah, so this color, I would throw this when it's in muddy water. I think I have another one here. Yeah. These two colors. Definitely in muddy water. So and then maybe this one at nighttime is what I'm gonna be throwing. Okay. Um, I have actually I, I think I bought one in every color. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, so that's my plan of attack right now. I haven't gone fishing since winter started. I tried trout fishing. Um uh, before I left for California for my Christmas break, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was bass fishing out in California and uh, I didn't catch a bite. I don't know if you saw the picture where, where I was making that joke where uh, I was like, look how big I look at the biggest fish I've ever caught in my life. And it was just oh, a little yeah. tiny bait fish. Yeah. <laughs> so technically I didn't get skunked that day, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I didn't catch any bass. And um, so yeah, so that's kind of my plan of attack uh, during uh, during winter time. These little these little darker uh, dark uh, eh, dark sleeper swim baits, mm-hmm. uh, just kind of slow slow and low kind of almost, and then also just the the route the lipless crankbaits. I think those are my main two things. I've also want to say that I want to try some swim baits as well, and then obviously you can't go wrong with the worm. Are you targeting any specific structure? Whenever you go out, or are you just looking for points and channels? Uh, channels, especially if there's concrete, um, they're, they'll more likely be around concrete or rocks. You want to okay. go around rock structure, yeah, just because uh, they tend to hold heat the most, so especially on a cold day. And you kind of just want to like drop it like right in front of them and just let it slow, slowly fall. And uh, or just with the, with the dark sleeper, you can kind of trigger that. Uh, although. Uh, what is it? Tackle the tactical bassing guys. They recently kind of, re- I think last year they released a deep diving crank that is specifically designed to target a reaction strike from bass. 
that's you know because apparently they still you know react to certain things but it's mostly around sounds and the frequency of the sounds according to them do you get in into any of the suspending jerk baits because i know there for a while those were like all the crave oh yeah i've i've actually had more luck with the uh, spending a uh, jerk baits in the spring in the f- fall time mm-hmm. than, than I have because I mean I haven't really tried them here in the winter time but uh, that's another thing I want to try but uh, I think I want to go ahead and try the what I just showed you first yeah well then, let me show you, let me show you what I'm getting into here this is my trout uh, flies for the winter time uh, yeah you can see the the pink one and those three on the bottom. Mm. Like all those, I've tied those. So the rule for trout here right now is tiny, tiny, tiny. Actually, smaller than that is what they really recommend. But my terrible eyes can't see that small to tie them. Uh, yeah, you just and you find something that doesn't have ice over it, throw out, let it float down, and hope to God something's swimming around to, to catch it. Dude, I mean, uh, I don't know how you guys like that finesse of like kind of just you know what is it a fake casting or something like that and just going yeah, like shadow and, casting. Yeah, that that's river runs through it stuff. So when you're out in a river, you're basically you know the, the place I was fishing at, I could almost reach across the bank with my fly rod. Mm. So you're kind of standing <clears throat> just on the edge there, and you're just kind of flipping it upstream, and the current takes it. You don't have to do those big looping rolling casts around here. I think that's a little bit of a myth. And okay. it's some, and it's something that intimidates a lot of people. You know, they think with fly fishing, you've got to be this magnificent, beautiful caster that does these beautiful loop casts and stuff. And you don't have to do all that. You just got to be quiet and sneaky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's my biggest problem. I'm a big hawking dinosaur out there crashing through the, the <laughs> water trying to sneak up on trout. Uh <laughs> And the same thing with ice fishing. It's so delicate. You drop this little tiny jig down, it hits the bottom, and you've got your... Have you ever seen an uh, ice fishing uh, fish finder, a flasher is what they call it? No, I haven't seen one. So it's just this circular thing, and uh, it marks the bottom, and then um, these little red flashes will pop up whenever you see fish. So you drop your jig down, you see the jig go down, and you just watch that flasher and wait for a fish or a little red line to move up to where your jig is. And then you just, you hang on. You just feel that little tiny tap, wink, pull them up. Yeah, it's, I I suck at it. I'm not good at it yet. (laughs) (laughs) So, and that's been a big hit to, to me, you know, back in Ohio, I was a gangster. I could fish anywhere and catch fish. And out here, I am no bueno. <laughs> Damn, yeah. Well, so, that's kind of me in California. I mean, but then again, California bass fishing is not the greatest, although they can get pretty big out there as well, but it's not the greatest. Like, yeah. It's not like here in Texas where, like, you can see, like, like maybe, like, a puddle of water and you can find a, at least a two-pounder somewhere in there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been lucky enough. My neighbor has been taking me out and showing me the ropes, and – I think finding a mentor, an outdoor mentor, is something that's highly underrated. Uh, mm-hmm. It's something that we need more of. And I think, I mean, just from a couple of your videos, you've started to kind of get these little groups of people together and go on hikes and, and go fishing together, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's, what started that? Are you starting like some kind of, is it just a hiking group? Is it a mental health group? Is it a fishing group? Or is it just people that get together uh so these people so the people in the the most recent youtube video uh there were uh people i met while we were playing kickball because uh so the kickball league here like the recreation was started back up when when was it maybe i think uh back in august it started back and started back up um so i met these people through there and then i kind of just organized them to kind of just go on hike Um, and uh, what i do want to do is i want to start meetup groups so we can you know, so I can basically get more people to go on, you know, larger hikes and such. I just got, you know, get a little bit more equate, uh, situated with, um, with different trails and stuff like stuff like that. So, uh, but it's not necessarily a mental health thing. I mean, it's helping us in terms of exercise. And I mean, with the, the, the group that I went, I mean, we're kind of a tight group now. I spent New Year's uh, Eve with them and uh, that was a good time. So 
uh, yeah, we're definitely going to go on more hikes together. And that's kind of, I think that's kind of going to be my, like my core group. But mm-hmm. then I do want to kind of like, I was thinking about that actually, like I was thinking about like trying to see if I can set up like some meetup groups, just, just go hike and fish or just basically hike, you know, get to know more people and get more people like people that want to kind of like go hiking, but they're, you know, either are worried about going on their own or just, you know, want to do it with other people. So, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of, I started, I, this past Friday, I tried to do a virtual hike. Mm. Um, so, you know, try to get people from all across wherever, uh, to hop on a Facebook live event with me and, you know, show me where they were hiking. That didn't go as well as I'd hoped. Uh, but I think it's something that in today's times would be very helpful. Um, I think people are looking for that outlet, something if they can't necessarily participate in it, I think they'd like to see at least other people participating in it. Yeah. I was thinking about doing something like that as well. Uh, but for fishing, once we got my kayak, like we all go kayaking and just kind of do like a little, uh, it, uh, Instagram live. And, uh, we, it's kind of a virtual hiking thing where it's like, I mean, virtual kayaking thing where it's like, okay, you have this person, hi- uh, kayaking in this lake, I'm kayaking in this lake, you know, we have another person in the lake and we're just all, you know, moving around trying to go get some, go get some fish or something. Um, I think that can kind of play. I was, I was thinking that can kind of play out, you know, but we'll see. Do you think that's kind of contradictory to, uh, you know, all the social media stuff causing, you know, some of the mental health issues uh, as far as you're trying to separate yourself away from it a little bit, but then you're tuning into it to see this outdoor stuff. So, um, you know what? So one of my uh, recent guests and uh, because, you know, that's kind of the question we're going to tackle on that. One of the guests that I'm trying to have on, uh, we just haven't had our schedules lined up yet. Uh, We uh, actually met her on a plane and she recommended me to watch uh, the social dilemma on Netflix um, so with that, our plan was, okay, we're going to talk about that, that, uh, that, I guess, documentary, and then also talk about what benefits could social media have, like in moderation, you know, like almost anything else. So to answer your question, uh, it can be depending on how you do it. Um, because the thing is, uh, there, one of the, be- one of the benefits of having social media is that you can kind of, uh, like, for example, if you're across, like for me and my family, like that's one of the reasons how that's one of the ways like how I interact with my brothers through social media. I take certain pictures and, you know, they know that, okay, I'm, he's doing that, whatever, and this and that. Uh, the downside to that though, is that you only put out what you, what you want to put out. Right. So it's not going to give an actor. It's not always going to give an accurate representation of how you really are doing in life, which is, you know, one of the things that you see criticism a lot where it's like, Oh, well, these profiles are fake because they're just posting all their highlights, but they're not posting like all their like, all their, all, all their uh, trouble, all their, like, you know, you never, you don't know what demons they, they, they're fighting, right? So it can be kind of a counterintuitive, I guess you can say. Uh, but again, with moderation, like if you're like uh, tuning into a live, that's kind of productive, you know, that, that'll work. With, but if you're constantly uh, just on Instagram, like just, I don't know, like looking in, at certain types of uh, profiles that kind of like satisfy a certain advice, that's where it kind of gets detrimental. <laughs> like, cause, and that's another thing that I talked about, like what I was t- talking about earlier when, with, uh, with uh, one of the guys that is in a former, uh, former collegiate athlete. He was telling me that, well, we were, t- we kind of agreed that like, we see all these fitness people, but if we get too caught up in like seeing them and then you look in the mirror and it's like, well, I don't look like them. Like, you know, all that stuff. And you start beating yourself down. That can be very detrimental to your, to your uh, mental health. And that's where like the drawbacks are. And, I think um, a lot of it has to do with with uh, just confidence. Like we need to kind of like build up confidence in, in people and figure. And I think that's kind of why I want to tie in the elements of the outdoors. Because like you catch a bass, like kind of like where like where I talked about earlier, where I caught my four pound bass doing nothing really, <laughs> not you know barely getting into it. You get that confidence. You want to kind of strive for more and things like that. So that kind of helps ward off of those things. And uh, one one of the last one of the benefits I think social media has is like for example like you want to keep up with like the national team like national soccer team national basketball team during olympics that helps mm-hmm. but you know, so there are benefits to this it's just the problem is we uh, i don't know i don't know what it is where we just kind of go towards the the very bad uh, habits that you know social media kind of like allowed us to develop 
Yeah, I mean, and social media is developed in such a way to channel you to those things that they know that you crave. And I, that's kind of what the social dilemma is about, right? How right. they've engineered social media to to trigger that kind of like lizard brain. Right. That's that's basically the social media and the, the social dilemma in a nutshell. Yeah. And yeah. it's a shame because the outdoors, like you were just saying, it can teach you so many lessons and it, mm -hmm. it, 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 it it'll build you up and break you down at the same time. You know, I had a, a horrible but awesome hunting season. And when I came away from it empty handed, I, I ate all my tags. I didn't shoot anything. But when I came away from it, I, I was so jazzed. Like I'm already making plans for this year. I don't even get the I don't even get the, you know, select my draw units until April, mm. but I already know what I'm going to do. Like I, I've got it planned out. I'm ready to rock. And I know this year I'm going to shoot something. <laughs> it's going to happen. Uh, and I think a lot of people miss out on, on the, on the joy of having that feeling from just yeah. being outside. Yeah. I mean, and uh, I know specifically for hunting any, I mean, even if you just go camping and in my case, actually I've gotten chased by boar two or three times while, while I was just trying to like, go into like uh, these like grasslands and try to sneak it into a pond. And I've gotten chased by a boar. <laughs> so, oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, dude. So, and you find out real quick that nature is not kind to you. No, it is. It is a mother effort for sure. <laughs> That's there why I subscribe to the Reddit. Uh, nature is metal. Oh, I love that channel. Yeah. That, just, it that. just reminds you that you're just a little ball of flesh. That's very, very weak. And there's a lot of things out there that can kill you. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I used to be kind of uh, a little bit on like the, that kind of like animal advocate type of thing where it's like, Oh, well, why, why are we trying to kill this animal on the forest? And I didn't understand the conservation behind certain, certain like those kinds of kills. Right. So um, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you live, you find out that you really do need to like help balance the ecosystem because, you know, you, you just leave, you leave everything to that. You might like see certain animals extinct and, and animals kind of like start starving because there's not enough food because the, their food source is very limited or whatever. So, yeah. We're about to have some weird times here in Colorado uh, just because uh, they passed the introduction of wolves. I heard about that, yeah. And it was slim. I mean, a lot of people didn't like it. And I think they're still going to try to fight it because the I guess the thing is, if there are wolves already here, they can't technically be reintroduced because they're already here. Right. So there are people that are trying to gather all this evidence that, hey, there are already, you know, wolves here. We don't need them anymore. And then on top of that, if you look at the studies of Yellowstone and other, area, other, other areas where they've introduced them, the undulate population has just nosedived. Yeah. And, you know, a big draw here to Colorado is elk and mule deer. And if they start letting wolf herds out, or it's it's going to be bad wolf packs rather yeah yeah i mean uh I, i've heard about that and like i because uh i i follow uh, what is it cam haynes and he was like very very outspoken about that and uh yeah so i i don't get why that barely passed um a lot of times a lot of people that vote for those kinds of things they think oh we're going to conserve you know the environment but you know they don't understand the impact on the ecosystem well, I had a I posted a thing on my our Facebook page, um, the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. They do these um, you know updates about what hunters pay for, how hunting is a good thing, how we're you know good stewards, how we pay for a vast majority of the conservation efforts that go into it. And I had someone comment, you know, a very negative comment about hunting, and it was obviously a person that really didn't understand how how nature is funded, how conservation is funded. Mm -hmm. You know, those swim baits that you bought, a certain percentage of that tax comes out and goes into funding for natural spaces. Mm -hmm. your, your fishing license, that goes into conservation. Um, I donated almost a hundred dollars this year <laughs> and didn't harvest an animal. So uh, I, I, there's a lot of, uninformed and miseducated people when it comes to outdoors. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, even like not even just here in the U.S., even like overseas, because I remember hearing that story about that uh, female hunter that uh, that shot down that one bull uh, giraffe. I forgot what country, and uh, they were just kind of giving her so much crap and just basically death threats and all this stuff. But it's like, okay, where's the context? You 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 forgot that basically this bull was already old, past his prime to actually pass, you know, produce any more offspring. Those giraffes were already endangered. So what he what that bull was doing was killing the other male, the younger male giraffes, basically preventing them from from reproducing because that's what you know males, male bulls. Uh, bull giraffes do you know because that's just wildlife right right so by and then the the same people that are trying to conserve the people they're the ones that put the tag up for for sale for the giraffe so they they, they completely didn't see that one they're helping because again it gives the other the younger males a chance to reproduce that way you could keep the species going and two the money that you get like you said that goes towards conservation yeah i mean uh the the economy of some of those African uh, countries solely depends on trophy hunting. Oh yeah, and not only that, but whenever that you shoot an animal, you're not allowed to import the meat. So all the meat from that big bull giraffe went back to whatever village they they shot the animal from. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Like, and uh, it's 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 sad sometimes because you know you see like on on TV like you see the, the cuddly little giraffes little you know elephants or whatever you know all, all these little animals and you think like you know they're it's nature nature's beautiful and but you know like we go like what we're talking about earlier like it's pretty harsh like you know like we at least when we eat meat we kill the animal first before we start you know harvesting it other animals when they get something they don't care if it's alive or dead they'll still they'll eat it as it's you know living like if you, if you, you see like videos of like i mean okay. i watch the, yeah I watch it all the time. Like I watch videos of like lioness, uh, uh, was it lions catch like these war hogs and just you know start munching on them right then and there, and they're still screaming and kicking, you know. And we get at least do the that aspect where like it's, it's humane because you're killing them first before you eat them. Like you know you're not you're not we're not just like cutting out the ribeye as they're alive. You know like no no we're not doing that. Yeah, and, and there's some animosity between. Well, obviously, but uh, between like hikers and hunters. Really? So, uh, here in Colorado, oh yeah. I think a lot mm. of it's hunters toward the hikers, <laughs> to be honest. Mm. Uh, but, you know, a lot of these trailheads, you use those to get into your hunting areas. And it's nothing to show up to your hunting ground. And then next thing you know, you got people just hiking right through there. Mm. Uh, but I think that's that's something people kind of forget a little bit, you know, as a hunter, you think, Oh, well I'm out here trying to, to get meat from my freezer. But at the same time, they've got just as much of a right to be outside as we do as hunters. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't know if you've delved in, into any of that kind of stuff as far as, you know, people understanding that getting outside is free and it's for everybody. We can all do it. Cause that's kind of what we're trying to do here at 12 hike is just encourage people to just get outside right? because the benefits they're proven. Even if it's not your one size fits all, it has benefit. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. uh, I mean, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do and I, I think you getting groups of people together is a good thing. Mm. Um, you know, that, that's how every really good group starts is just, somebody has an idea, Hey, let's get a bunch of people together. Yeah. <laughs> no, like you said, like there is proven benefits. Uh, uh, the only reason why I say one size fits all is because, well, one, I want to make sure that, you know, people understand that I'm not like saying that this is a blueprint to your specific situation or anybody's specific situation, uh, because I don't know what kind of demons people are fighting. Right. Uh, for some people, the outdoors might not do it. I'm not saying uh, I, me personally, I've never seen somebody that the outdoors didn't help. So, but you know, I still have to say that because, like, it might be like 
three or four people out of like a thousand that maybe won't benefit from the outdoors and they have to look a different they have to look for a different approach or some other thing like maybe maybe hiking didn't work so let's why not cooking you know try and learn new recipes and putting flavors together that's kind of like where so that's kind of like where my handle came from like new age alchemist uh, uh so basically it started off with this book called the alchemist by a brazilian author um, and that kind of, it was, it was meant to be a fiction book, but it's kind of turned into kind of a self-help book almost. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that kind of like inspired me to start taking up that, that name to a certain degree. But it was also because of the fact that, you know, like um, when you, a lot of things, like it's an old word, obviously, like not a lot of people know what alchemy or an alchemist is, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's, a uh, it's complicated because well, for one thing, you know, you, you, it's not, you don't make things out of thin air. You got to put in something to get something in return of equal value. So in my case, it's like, I got to put in the effort to get what I want in life. Like if I want to make sure that I you know, want, you know, roof over my head, you know, want a car or vehicle that'll drive me around, uh, and, you know, something that'll pay for my fishing and all that stuff. I got to put in the work to be able to get that. So it's a lot, it's, it's, there's the inspiration behind that. And then like when you, t- when you also look at like certain things like cooking, I mean, all like realistically all cooking is alchemy because, you know, you, you don't, you don't like when you make a dish, you don't get any more than the amount of ingredients you put in. Whatever ingredients you get put in, you get that same amount of substance back. It's just in a different form. So that's kind of like where my, my thing came about where it's like, like you want, you want to achieve mental fitness physical fitness, you want to achieve all that, you got to put in the same amount of effort for what you want to look like or for what, how healthy you want to get into. That's where that cool thing with the alchemist, the, the alchemist came about. And new age, just because, I mean, it's more of like what I'm taking it, what it used to be, applying it to what it is now. So that's what, where my whole handle came about. Okay. And I, I think that's, uh, that's a really important thing. So find just finding something to put some of your energy into, mm-hmm. you know, especially in today's COVID times where we're all locked in our houses. Uh, a lot of people may be out of work. That doesn't mean you can't be productive. Right. Uh, we'll take me for example, you know, uh, I haven't tied flies in probably four or five years, mm-hmm. but I started doing it again. I, I love it. Even if they're not, the best flies in the world, I can, I can channel energy into it. And then whenever I'm done, I hold this thing up and I go, oh, wow, this is really cool. I did this and it makes me feel better. Yeah. Um, and I, I think there are so many outdoor related activities that you can do that with. I mean, obviously you found one in fishing, you know, you put in a little bit of effort, you catch a big fish, you're like, oh crap, I can keep doing this. Right. Right. And like the thing is, like uh, sometimes people like in certain aspects of, of life, you put in the work. Sometimes you don't get what the amount of work that you put into that happens. Uh, I found that in the outdoors, it's really, really, really difficult for that to happen. Because, for example, if I go out to fish, I'm out there fishing. I may not catch a fish, but I'm for some reason, but I'm relaxed either way. It still de- decompresses me mentally and it's still kind of like, you know, on the fresh air, I'm getting vitamin D or, you know, I'm just out in fresh air in a different environment, not just trapped between, you know, brick, you know, what is it, a brick wall or whatever, you know, stuck or whatever. I'm not in between that. So you're still getting some other benefit for your effort. Like, and I think that's kind of where, like, I, my appreciation for the outdoors just got stronger, really, because I, I noticed that. Like, even, like, I would imagine that when you're going hunting, if you're going, like, so, like, if you're camping around being in nature, like, uh, I would imagine, like, that whole experience is something, you know, even if you don't get to shoot something that day, you still get a good experience out of it, you know? Yeah. And you know, when you can find a group of people that you enjoy going with, it makes it all the much better. Uh, we used to do a, you know, a summer trip to Michigan and we'd drive up in the middle of nowhere, no cell service. You set up a tent and there you go. You're stuck for three or four days with, you know, three or four people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you gain, the human connection back. You look at people, you tell stories, you talk to them, you listen. Uh, It's it's a very therapeutic thing to just be outside with other people. Right. Right. I mean, we're, uh, 
I mean, again, there's some exceptions, but most of the time I feel like, you know, we're just social, social creatures. Like we're meant to interact with people. And there's definitely studies that back that up. Like, you know, when you talk about like deprivation of like human contact or, you know, human conversations and what that does to mental health or even just the one psyche and one's ego, like it definitely messes them up. So uh, yeah, like, like you said, like that definitely helps. And just being around people, like, when I went hiking with that group, um, I was, you know, I was told that we can fish there. So, you know, I was thinking, all right, there might be some bass, but turns out there really wasn't any bass, but there was a, a ton of gar and a ton of sunfish. My friends all caught sunfish. I was targeting the gar just because, well, when I threw my lipless crankbait, all of a sudden I felt the strike, right? Uh -huh. um, okay. And then I see it, I see like, all of a sudden something like my line moving like this. And then I, I feel it like the, the gar trying to like, bring it into its throat and I'm like oh it's a gar and then immediately I just set the hook and it was too early because it got the jaw I managed to reel them in a little bit enough to know that it was a gar but then uh -huh. it released and I was just like and every single time I was just trying to catch the same one and I was getting strikes on it every single time but you know it was just the the timing of it was was a little difficult because I was just like okay now I have to be patient and I'm just like it's kind of like when you're holding an egg and you're, you're, you're like you're trying not to like crush it like you're just like uh, 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 crap Damn it! They're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of like that. Like with the, that's how I was. Oh, that's how I was all day after the first bite that I just told you that uh, were actually real part of it in. And uh, yeah, I was just like, wait, 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 wait. No, you do too late. I mean, too early. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So and it sounds like the the hikes and the groups are something you're going to continue. What other plans do you have for the future? Like, I know with me, I'm trying to develop like a really solid idea about what I want to do with my podcast and my, in my medium. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea about where you're going to go? Uh, so my plan uh, is to basically target as many like streaming platform, not streaming platform, but video hosting platforms as I possibly can to get uh, the podcast, my, my podcast, mindful endeavors out uh, just because I want people to listen and see if maybe it helps people. And then if people want to actually talk to, you know, have something to contribute in terms of mental health, you know, we'd love to schedule a meeting with them. Uh, my plan for the future, I, will, I do, like like I mentioned earlier, I do want to get a nutritionist and I want to get like a, a fitness coach of some form. And then I do have a high school teacher that's on board that wants to kind of uh, talk about that. But I think largely I want to talk to a parent that actually, because there's, uh, I think, Somebody added me recently that, you know, that they testify with the Oregon State Board or, or Portland State Board of Education, you know, to basically give the, their uh, their experience as to how their child is going through, like, this mental health crisis with the lack of school and everything. So that's the plan uh, in terms of that. I do want to try different things to basically get the podcast out there. Uh, and then, I mean, uh, something different from that, I do – I mean, I'm working on launching some kind of apparel business related to the outdoors. Uh, yeah, so that'll probably be going up pretty soon, I want to say, probably within the next two months. Um, and then maybe my whole my whole Instagram channel will have its own merch. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. What's the best place for people to tune into your uh, content, your podcast, and, and your Instagram channel? Page. So, <clears throat> uh, so I'm on Spotify, Apple, Anchor. Uh, you can, you know, just search for New Age Alchemist or Mindful Endeavors, and you'll find my podcast. Uh, for Instagram, it's New Age Alchemist, all one word. Uh, and uh, you can find the links to the recent episodes there, or just you know, links to my podcast there on the bio. And then same thing for YouTube, just New Age Alchemist. You know, that's there. Uh, that's where you can find me. And uh, if you if anybody wants to talk about mental health, you feel free to send me a DM. You know, we can go ahead and schedule something. Or if you just want to watch me hiking, fishing, and eventually hunting, you know, you can tune into the chat, to the Instagram. Uh, are, are you going to take the Pikachu hat hunting? Uh, I don't know. I would. I as well. It's brought you pretty good luck fishing. Yeah, it has for sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Oh, shoot. And you've got, what, seven episodes out now? Nine. Nine, okay. And I think episode 
It's either four or five is particularly good, right? Or is it six? Uh, so what is it? I know episode four is pretty good. Episode five and six. I'm not sure which one's better. I want to say. Whichever one's got me on, it's great. Let's just be honest. I mean, that one's a good one too. <laughs> number eight, number eight, the one that you're on. Number <laughs> eight, the one you're on. Yeah. Uh, I think was it six? No, episode five. Episode five is probably the one uh, where I'm talking about the homeless population. So that's probably a better one. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's good. I I appreciate what you're doing. You know, not a lot of people want to tackle mental health in an honest way and do something about it. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it's tough. It's, it's a hard thing to do to look at somebody and go, okay, you've got a little bit of a mental health problem. We need to fix it. Yeah. Um, then, yeah, that is a challenge, uh, because, uh, since I've kind of switched into this whole mental health, uh, focus, uh, I've tried my best to kind of talk to people that need to just be heard, like just not necessarily on the podcast, off the podcast, but it's hard because it's like, for me, it's like, even me, like I, I still have kind of a weird anxiety when I talk to people. So it's like, how am I going to put myself out there before them? Before you know, if I need to help myself first, right? So yeah. It's, uh, well, for anybody that, that might be listening, do you have any? Uh, have you picked up any little good tidbits of advice to improve your mental health incrementally over time and build the goals? Hold on. Give me a second because my other phone is ringing. Give me one second. Good. All right, I apologize for that. That was work. Yeah, that was work calling me. And, uh, but work? It's, me. it's like 10 o'clock at night. Well, because I had to work uh, earlier today at 3 p.m. So there was something that went wrong, but it wasn't my fault. Like, I just saw him like, hey, this is what happened. This is what we did. And I'm like, oh, okay, it wasn't that. So, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so mental health advice. What's, what's a couple little tidbits that you've picked up from your time talking to other people? So uh, two things. First, around social media, uh, do your best to, like one thing that I do recommend, I don't know if people do this, but I know I know people that tend to uh, have like the addiction to social media, they'll wake up and one of the first things they do is check their social media. Um, if you can get into the habit of that being one of the last things you do in the morning versus the first one of the first things you do in the morning, I think um, even though it's a small little change, it definitely would help just kind of like clear your mind and, you know, get ready for the day. Because uh, ultimately, like like uh, one of the things that I also want to add would, would advise is just not, not to like hold so many people on Instagram on a pedestal. I know it's hard to do, especially at a young age, because, you know, pop culture is everything. But I think that's probably one of the things like, because I think when you do that, you tend to not appreciate the things that are good in your life. So definitely those that, that, and then just be, have more appreciation for the good things that go in your life. Uh, and if there's something that you don't want to, that may not be working in your favor, take some, uh, make some attempts to try to like fix it. You know, uh, 
I know it's it's a different situation for different people, but I think personally, it's just one of those things. It's like you don't know until you try. So you don't know if you're going to get fit until you try. You don't know if, if uh, you're going to get better at something until you try. So I definitely uh, think that, uh, you, you know, give it a shot. Uh, respect the journey. Appreciate the journey. The journey is also important as much as the destination is. They're both. They're both just you know have the same importance. Sounds good to me. Uh, well, I think that's about all I wanted to talk about today. It's it's like fifteen minutes past my sleepy time. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my, my kids wake up at a quarter till five in the morning. So oh wow. Yeah, it's not no bueno, no bueno. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, let's see here, I'm in this. All right. 